welcome to my channel or welcome back for those of y'all who don't know my name is Leah and today we're gonna have a conversation about mental health yeah I know it's not really a fun topic people like to talk about it but it is May which is the national month I guess of mental health awareness that's what we're gonna call it but anyway May is mental health awareness month so mental health I have a lot of mental health issues I actually have four that we aren't gonna discuss in this video we're gonna discuss one but the issues I have been diagnosed with in my lifetime have been anxiety disorder depression PTSD and borderline personality disorder today we're gonna talk about the latter mainly because a lot of people don't know that May is also National Borderline Personality Awareness Month. Whew, that's a lot to say. Now, before I was officially diagnosed with BPD, a lot of people thought I had bipolar disorder. So, we're just gonna do a this, not that, real quick right off the bat. If you see me looking down, it's because I have my laptop right here. It's cool. The main difference between borderline personality disorder and bipolar disorder is basically the range of emotions that each goes through and the length that they go through. So bipolar disorder is mainly associated with manic and depressive episodes. So they're like really happy, really ecstatic all over the place a lot of the times. And then they just drop. To a really depressed state and that goes on long lengths of time like it can be months it can be weeks but for the most part it's not like a drastic change for those of us with borderline personality disorder it's a roller coaster of emotions every single day sometimes i joke that each hour on the clock is a different emotion that i'm going to be experiencing throughout the day and sometimes i can do that within a five minute period and it sucks a lot. Super draining, super exhausting, super aggravating. Like, I piss myself off. So what do I mean by this? I mean, my emotions switch so quickly that people actually think there's separate personalities going on within my body. And that's not the case, I don't know exactly the mechanics of how this happens in my brain and that's mainly because psychologists don't either the experts don't really know why this is either but yeah i can go from like super super manic to like hulk angry to like i'm about to go jump off a bridge crying to like nothing like feeling nothing literally in like all 10 minutes and it can be over nothing like literally i know like one day my eraser didn't erase right. I don't know why I boohoo cried, but I did. And then I was really, really angry. And then I, it just didn't matter. But yeah, that's the stupid shit I be on. Not my fault, but also my fault. So, I guess we'll start with how I got diagnosed, what the main symptoms are, and how I've been coping with it since being diagnosed and how I'm trying to improve on it like throughout my life. BPD is not curable, it's treatable, but we'll go through that too because I have words for that. But yeah, I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder a little over a year ago. I had to do some math, I also had to burp, excuse me. Yeah, so I was diagnosed a little bit over a year ago. The incident, Sorry, there's something on my ceiling. I thought it was a bug, but it's a paint mark that I kind of made. Sorry. So, um, the incident that caused me to be diagnosed, let's just say it was a long night at a bar. I did a lot of stuff that we're not even going to get into because I'm not proud of it whatsoever. But on the way home with my then boo thing, he wasn't happy with me and he gave me the silent treatment and I was like 
don't do that. I, like, I can handle a lot of things. I can't handle the silent treatment. Yeah, he didn't listen. So I jerked the steering wheel while we were driving on the interstate towards the median. And we didn't die. We didn't wreck. But we could have. But for some reason, in my mind, that was a great idea. Like, I didn't think about it. Like, I don't... I don't know how to put myself back in that mindset to explain to you why my dumb ass did that. But needless to say, I ended up single. And I realized I might need some help. <laughs> like, serious professional help. So I went to a psychiatrist. It wasn't the first time, obviously, since I had been diagnosed with three other mental health disorders. But this was the first time in like years that I've been. And we went through a lot of my symptoms, a lot of the issues that I was having, you know, with medication or what I feel like wasn't working, blah, blah, blah. She's over here, she's checking, checking, checking. She's like, hold on, I gotta go look at some stuff. She goes, she looks, she's like, you have borderline personality disorder. Like, that is it. Like, she didn't ease me into it or anything. And I was like, I've never heard this before. And what do you mean? Like, am I Patricia? Like, from Split? And she's like, no, not exactly. And I was like, what do you mean not exactly? Like, I am or I'm not. So we ended up having like this long session where we went over what it is, what the symptoms are. I argued with her, like, no, I don't think so. And she was like, really? But yeah, over time, I came to accept it. Do I like it? No, but I don't really have a choice. So, symptoms of borderline personality disorder. Let's get through them. There are nine main symptoms that are used to categorize people with borderline personality disorder. So, the first one we're going to talk about, fear of abandonment. AKA, I'm clingy as hell, which is really funny because I can also be distant as hell. I hate rejection. I will reject you before I give you the chance to reject me. You tell me no once, you tell me no for life. Even if you have like a legitimate excuse, like if I say, hey, you wanna go out and get lunch? And you're like, yo, I can't, my grandma just died. I take that personally. I know that your grandma just died, I know. That's a legitimate reason you can't go out to lunch, but I promise you I will never ask you out to lunch again. Like I can't because I'm scared you'll reject me. Like, I, it, I can't, I won't let me, I don't know why. But yeah, and then the people that I really, really want in my life, once I officially let you in, you'll start to notice a trend, but like we are always together, like, those memes that are like your tone of voice changed do you still like me do you still want to be my friend you only texted me once in five minutes and you used to text me three times in five minutes like what did I do wrong that's me in my mind I'm a lot better now like I understand that this is a problem with me now like now that I'm aware of it I can actually work on it type deal when I wasn't aware of it I'd freak out. Now I just have to be like, oh, he's at work. Chill out. He's not about to go fly across the fucking Atlantic Ocean to Europe and never come back because he fucking hates your guts. Dramatic, I know, but it's called mental health. Doesn't make sense. Not supposed to. So yeah, apparently I have a fear of abandonment. So abandon you before you abandon me bad idea bad 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 number two unstable relationships now the only unstable relationships I really have are romantic like my friendships are solid my family relationships are solid minus like my brother but that's a different story but romantically first of all I don't think I like people with fully developed prefrontal cortexes that's just my type apparently I also have a type 
called Kyle and yeah need I say more but yeah so I like narcissists and like guys who really just don't care about me honestly I don't know what's wrong with me but my relationships tend to be very unstable because my emotions were very unstable so me doing Patricia like being really happy one second and then 30 seconds later being mad for no reason and then crying a river five minutes after that like I could see why that might be an issue for some people and how that could cause issues in relationships especially if neither one of us knows why this is happening so yeah a lot of my relationships communication issues basically because I didn't know what to communicate like how do I tell you what's going on with me when I didn't know what was going on with me you know what I'm saying that and then of course I pick losers but we discussed that already so boom oh also you guys probably like you can get a better feel for this if you remember Pete and Ariana Pete has bipo bipolar I don't know why I just did that I'm gonna hate myself Pete has borderline personality disorder so a lot of us fall really quickly in love like there's no infatuation it's either we like you we're getting married or it'll get away from me and that's because we do this thing called splitting like it's a black and white there's no gray area period <laughs> so like you're either my world or you're my nothing and that's just how it goes for relationships and pretty much everything else that you can pretty much split into and have like a gray area we'll never see that gray area i mean with treatment obviously but for all intents and purposes of this talk and the symptoms in black and white get it splitting black and white yeah that's how it's going to be we also tend to overly romanticize situations in people which helps us fall in love like really really quickly but that's a bad thing because I don't know what quote this is but it's one of my favorites because I can relate to it so much looking at the world through rose colored glasses you end up ignoring all the red flags because all the flags look red or something like that but the way I said it makes sense if you think about it so there's that three unclear or shifting self-image all I can tell y'all about this one is one day I'm Beyonce, City Girl, Megan the Stallion, Hot Girl Summer, that bitch. A week later, I'm like my 600 pound life or like a loser. Like, I don't know. I'm either feeling myself or I'm not. Um, it's also said that sometimes that I like take on the personality of like whatever group I'm around as if I have no clear idea of self which was true I can definitely look back and like my snapchat memories and see that I'm a lot better now like I've isolated myself from a lot of people after the diagnosis I figured out who I was what I like to do what my hobbies were and basically I learned me and I stuck with that and that's important not just for people with borderline but everybody period number four this is probably my favorite non-favorite symptom and that's because this is the one that like I exude like I exhibit this above all others and that's impulsivity slash self-destructive behaviors I will be at work true story my job used to have like these flamingos just lying around I didn't know where one day I just took one it's in my backyard same they had hula hoops I've taken that before like there's cone the cones on the side of the road yeah there's a couple of those in my book book bag in my backyard and true story I've stolen a speed bump from Walmart before not premeditated we went to Walmart to get something we came out 
hey, this is a nice looking speed bump. Boom, now it's in the back of the truck. I'm pretty sure it's illegal, but I'm pretty sure my statute of limitations is up because I was like four years. But yeah, I'm impulsive like that. Or like, ow, oh, this is it. Somebody was sad. So I said, let's go to Europe for two weeks. And that's what the fuck we did. Like that. But also on top of that, it's also associated with binging. Like people with borderline binge a lot. Binge drink, binge eat, binge have sexual relationships. Um, maybe without protection because that's a risky behavior. But you know, don't judge. Um, but yeah, so like randomly i i love money i save money like no one else and then one day i will just blow five thousand just because i wanted to binge eat that's how i got thick binge drink self-coping mechanism not a good one and same thing with self coping with sex basically these things happen when we're upset which is why you're self-coping when you're upset or when I'm upset specifically with my borderline I binge drink a lot and then I'll binge eat and then I'll binge sleep there used to be a time I used to binge fuck so like and it's all impulsive like that's always happening when I'm being impulsive and deciding hey let's go steal the speed bump for no reason like what am I gonna do with a speed bump, guys? Who does that? Ooh. Number five. Number five and I aren't very close, like at all. It's labeled as self harm, but suicidal behavior is also in that one. More so when I was like younger, like up until like 22. But honestly, yeah, that one's not really an issue for me unless you're gonna like include like me saying like, I'm going to drink until I black out. I don't give a fuck if I wake up or not type shit, whatever. Um, Number seven is chronic feelings of emptiness. Yeah, but I feel like that symptom is like self-explanatory. Like there are times where I just like lay in my bed and like that's it like I just lay there like I don't feel anything I don't want anything I don't think anything like I just feel like a shell like I could be having an outer body experience but I'm not like somehow I'm just stuck in this body that's about as detailed as I can explain it because there's literally nothing to explain because there's nothing there eight me and eight we might as well be like fucking married or Siamese twins or something but eight is labeled as explosive anger I call this Hulk anger because I had no other way to explain it before so yeah you just get really angry irrationally angry maybe that's a better word I get irrationally angry over things that are are literally not that big a deal and I know it's irrational I know I shouldn't be this angry about it but I am and like I can't control it and normally those are the times that I do stupid stuff that like later on I'm like it was that serious you didn't have to do all that and then we wouldn't be in this position but at that time it feels like the like everything feels justified like I feel like the Hulk like all I see is red I kind of black out sometimes but it's just because I'm wholly consumed by rage at that time um sometimes like after my diagnosis that rage wasn't towards anything outside of me I had a lot of anger towards myself like why am I like this why can't I fix it like what the fuck that type of stuff but I don't really do that as much like maybe once every six months because it's just like get it together but yeah I've been doing a lot better with that type of anger I just 
whenever I feel it coming on, I just like remove myself from everything, sit in a corner. Sometimes it takes days to get over whatever it was that I was mad at, but like I just literally have to isolate myself and just sleep, whatever it is at that time. Um, another like example was I had this crush at school and we had like this routine like I love routines I'm a creature of habit so we'd always park next to each other and then like when class ended we'd always walk to our cars then we both would like set up our phones to bluetooth get ready and leave but I would always drive off first one day he beat me to the cars and left before I even like got in my car and it took me 45 minutes to calm the fuck down before I could leave and drive home. Like I had to call my best friend. I had to, like, I, girl, this is what happened. I know it makes no sense. I know I shouldn't be angry, but I'm shaking. I'm crying. Like I am so livid. So that's something I have to live with. Yay me. Um, number nine is feeling suspicious or out of touch with reality, AKA, being paranoid um I'm highly paranoid about literally everything which is weird because yeah I'm paranoid about everything but then like the impulsivity kicks in or like the risky behaviors and I start like binge doing things I shouldn't be doing and like I don't know where that paranoia goes so like I really still have like this really loose understanding of it myself but I felt like now is the time to like discuss it I don't really tell people I have BPD I've never really been open about it but I started this YouTube channel this is my month for it so I figured why not although there's not distinct personality switches like there's not people within me who think they're like a person protecting a person I think that's kind of like how personality disorder really goes <clears throat> there's no personalities I just switch emotions so fast that people think I have different personalities but I have given my symptoms names so like Beatrice is what I tell people I'm about to be when I'm going to be experiencing the Hulk anger or I'm irritated and aggravated and like you just need to leave me alone because I'm ready like I'm on go Beatrice is here like leave me the fuck alone so that's her then there's Stacy we call Stacy the party animal and Stacy represents basically my impulsivity and my binging if Stacy's coming out we're going to a bar we're about to get drunk She's probably going to take somebody home. She's probably about to go spend $5,000 shopping at Sephora, Ikea, of you name it. Of what else? Oh, we're probably eating at like 10 restaurants that day too as well. I don't know what to tell you guys. <laughs> like that's just her. Then you have Emily. Emily is the person that I use to represent my crybaby ladies. Basically, she's a Pisces, sometimes a Cancer, but she's a really emotional one. So she's also the one that like falls in love really quickly and gets her feelings hurt really quickly because she's fucking dumbass bitch. And then there's me, Malia, the one that's like in control of everything, the one that's like normal. But other than that, um, that's pretty much all I really have to say about this. I think I covered everything. I'm Malia. I have borderline personality disorder. How I handle it. For the most part, I'm really self-aware now. Like, I know what's going on. I know what to look for. I know what to expect. So therefore, I know what triggers me as well. So whenever I'm in situations that do that or situations where I feel like Beatrice and that angriness coming and consuming me, I have mantras that I chant like, don't react. Because this that's always been my biggest issue. I am a reactor, like I react 
emotionally, angrily, like whatever it is, I'm ruining something because I'm reacting instead of stepping back and just taking a moment to breathe, think rationally, and figure stuff out. And I, ooh, I jumped to conclusions, so not a good thing. But anyway, probably gonna re record this. I don't know. I kind of feel like you guys should get this. This is my first take, the real take. Um, but anyway, this backdrop's supposed to be purple, but it looks black, so I'm sorry about that. But yeah, bye. Just want to say thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel, and also follow me on all my social media. See you next time.